Hi, I'm Brian Gracely with Wikibon. We're here with theCUBE live at DevOps Enterprise Summit here in San Francisco. Uh, excited to have Kavina Finn Braun, Director of Site Reliability Engineering for Salesforce, salesforce.com. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Um, you just gave a talk, uh, you were here speaking, um, talking about you know, feedback loops, how do you deal with, with failures, not so much site failures, but just when things go wrong. Um, talk about the types of things that you're trying to just share with people from an experience perspective. Um, we're trying to get people to really think about how they view failures, um, learn from the failures, how they interact with each other when they're talking about failure. Um, a lot of times, as we spoke about um, in our presentation, there's the concept of blame. Uh, we're trying to push for blameless. You can't be completely blameless, but you can talk to each other, behave with each other, help each other a little bit more, um, and more of that how and why as opposed to the what happened. Right, yeah. You know, we go to so many technology companies that are very technology-centric. The, the DevOps Enterprise Summit is very soft skills, right? Mm -hmm. and, and they're sometimes hard to quantify. They're sometimes hard for type A engineers to wrap their heads around. How are you guys dealing with, with being able to say, look, um, you know, we're a group, we're a team, we're trying to service our customers as well as we can. Like, how do you, how do you deal with that shift to get them to feel like uh, we can experiment, we can be creative? Because Salesforce has got a little bit of a, you know, maverick mentality. You guys are out trying to change the world. Yes, we are. Um, one of the things that we did specifically around that point was came up with this, the Stryfus model. Um, the idea of there's novice, there's beginner, there's competent, proficient, and expert. Um, and there's all those mixes of people. And all of those people together can actually help solve the problem. You're going to have people in a retrospective or a postmortem, if you will, that are an expert. You're going to have people who've never done it before that are novices uh, to the process. Um, the idea is helping each other, helping each other learn, um, making sure sure that um, we are aware of our biases. We pointed out that there are some folks in the room, if they've been involved in a postmortem before, they've worked in a complex system, they have this, this skill set where they can see that they have a bias and maybe the people in the room have a bias. Um, so it's more applying those soft skills to the technology to help solve the problems that we see in the technology. Now, you're an executive. Um, as you're talking to your team, there's probably one set of language you're going to use to solve the problem, get, it, get things back up and running. What's what? How's it different when you're talking up? When you're talking to your uh, your your staff, your chain of command? How do you have to change the language so they understand what you're trying to do? Um, it's funny. I actually don't change the language because I want my staff to understand um, that how we talk about the problem is how we should be just consistently talking about the problem. So uh, the work that Jay Paul and I did when we went to and I talked to our executives, I used the same language. I actually held, had my team come and actually help form some of the presentations and the deck that we used to show them um, and got the buy-in that way. The reason that I do that and the reason I think that it's a good idea is because it's got to go from the top down and the bottom up. So it can't be, a, it's not a one, and it's not a down, it's, it's all of us together solving the problem. So I want everybody to be consistent in what they're saying and what they're hearing. So one of the big things this week, and this whole show, is it's very community oriented. There's a lot of sharing, there's a lot of uh, you know, stories being told, how do we get there? Um, but every company's got a little bit of a unique culture. You, know, you talked about building your own maturity model, we, we've heard that. How, how much of the Salesforce culture Im impacts what that looks like? I mean, is there is there an example you can share that say, hey, you know, I, I heard somebody else talk about theirs and this is ours and, and they're a little different because of that? Um, well, I, I think you pointed out the start of, of our little chat here that Salesforce is a bit of a maverick. Um, we are very uh, focused on customer success. We're very focused on um, doing the right thing and supporting our customers. I think that you're going to find that same value set with any company with Etsy. Etsy has a very, uh, I would say, a little bit more of a mature process in, in doing retrospectives than we do. Netflix has a process, Yahoo has a process. Um, but at the end of the day, there's still that same base level idea of how you run a retrospective. Uh, Jay Paul talked a little bit about it in our deck. Um, and you take that basis and then you kind of overlay the company culture on top of that basis, and that's sort of where you come up with, with your own model. Okay. Make you fit. Um, Salesforce is a little bit unique in that you've got some direct to customer, you've got some where, where customers use your platform. How much do they come to you and say, hey, you know, we're, we're a technology company too, we're, we're building software, and what can we learn from you? I mean, is there, is there a mechanism for you to share some of your experience with your customers? I know sometimes vendors have, you know, customer, is there something that you guys do to, to share that from a community perspective as well? 
Um, we do have uh, Dreamforce, which was actually a couple weeks ago, and um, we do get a lot of customer feedback there. Uh, we also have Chatter. Um, Mark Benioff, our CEO, is big on Twitter. If you tweet him something, he will respond to you. Um, we're very open with our customers. There's uh, customer trust is our our main value. Um, and there's also a level of transparency there. Uh, so we do have customer outreach, we do have our customer support group, um, our customers for life group, where we are actually interacting with our customers on a daily basis. So, you know, Salesforce, uh, in, you know, Silicon Valley, DNA, uh, you know, looked at one of the big leaders, really driving change. A lot of companies here will tell you we're 75 years old, we're 150 years old. What would you say to them if they said, hey, what can we learn from Salesforce? What can I take back to Cleveland, Ohio, or, you know, middle of the country or something, and, and you know, take some of the goodness that you guys are learning and, and take it back to their space? Um, I think you heard pre-touch on it a little bit. Uh, I think in a lot of these technology companies, these big Silicon Valley companies, we tend to look at the bottom line, the P&L. Salesforce, of course, we look at that. We have shareholders, we have custom, uh, you know, stock and customers, but at the end of the day, it's about our customers. And I think that if more companies take the approach of, if we make our customers successful, by doing that, we're automatically going to be successful. Almost flip it on its side. It's a really about customer success. If you have customer success, you have business success. Yeah, no, and, I, and I think that's a great point for us to wrap up on. And we heard so many companies, we're not talking about technology this week, we're talking about, you know, what are the products that we're delivering? How do we make those customers successful? And I think we're seeing over and over again, just the metrics of DevOps and Agile that are saying, Doing it this way is going to help improve that, that customer interaction, help improve the profitability of the company as a byproduct. So thank you so much for being on. Uh, we're going to wrap up with that uh, here at DevOps Enterprise Summit here in San Francisco. All the videos will be on siliconangle.tv. Thanks for watching.